Hello class, how are you all doing today? Uh, I hope that your uh, quarantines or self-isolating is going well and that everybody has had a chance to uh, catch up on their deep learning experience. Um, right now I think homework three part, homework three is still out um, and will be out for another week or so. Um, but uh, not, it's never too, never too early to start on homework four. Um, well, it is too early because we haven't released it yet, but when we, re when we release it, it won't be ever too early to start on it. Um, that, is a, that is a true fact of life that I can, I can give to you all today. Um, so I'm going to be going over some skeleton code for homework four, part two. Um, and then hopefully I can answer any questions that you have uh, on Piazza um, because this is not live. So I couldn't answer any questions right now. Uh, yeah, uh, let, let's get into the code because this, this has gone on a bit long. Uh, so different from uh, starter code that you've been given in the past, um, I decided to break this up into Python files, like regular Python files instead of Jupyter Notebooks. Um, for two main purposes. The skeleton code and your subsequent uh, completion of the assignment, uh, the code for that will be a few hundred lines long. And we've done, we've done large uh, coding projects like this in the past, uh, but I think that the, the structure of this assignment uh, lends itself to be better situated for multiple files. Um, and also, you know, in the real world, uh, you'll see Python files, not really Jupyter Notebooks for full-scale projects, because uh, it's not a good idea to write all your code in one file, because it's uh, unreadable at a certain point. And we won't be able to really help you if you have all your code in one file, because it's harder to debug, because uh, you don't know, because everything is kind of interrelated at some point. Uh, and when you have all your code in one place, it's just impossible to read uh, from a TA's perspective. Um, so take that as you may. Uh, so we're going to go over what we have here. Um, I'm going to start with the data. Yeah, the data. Uh, so so we've, we've given you quite a bit of skeleton code, but there's also quite a bit of code that you'll have to write on your own. Um, the, the load data function like gives you all your data. Um, and returns it all here. Uh, but the back into the main file, uh, we have defined the letter list here, which is um, the, vo the vocabulary for a character-based uh, model. Uh, so all of these characters, um, and the, the padding, the SOS, and the end of S, uh, end of S, and end of sentence, um, are all of the characters that you would, or is the entirety of the vocabulary that you'll need uh, if you're going to do a character-based model. Um, as opposed to a word-based model. Uh, so, for example, some of the text in the, uh, in the, um, like, the, the transcripts that you'll see are, are words. Uh, so you could use, like, a word-based model. Um, there are pros and cons to using character-based versus word-based. I think they've, uh, we've gone over them before in lecture. Um, but when you have a word-based model, your vocab size is like extremely large. Um, uh, but uh, you have a smaller, um, like the 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 uh, LSTM length, or like the max length of your LSTM will be much smaller, um, which is good in some cases and bad in some other cases. Uh, in contrast, the vocab size for a letter list or like a character list like this uh, is pretty small, uh, but that means that the LSTM, when it like when it unrecurses itself for gradient backprop and stuff, uh, it'll be uh, much longer. So pros and cons to both. Uh, we we decided to give you skeleton code with uh, with just the uh, just the character so far. And if you if you can uh, get a, a good working model with this, then feel free to uh, adjust this in the future. So this is where the load data is called. Um, 
And so the first thing that you're probably going to want to do is write this transform letter to index function, uh, which I've thrown into the data loader uh, file. Um, so this is going. This is, should take in like your transcripts uh, from your from your load data, um, and along with that letter list, and construct um, a a new list based on the indexes of the original letter list. Uh, so usually, you'll see uh, once you have your vocabulary. Whoops. Once you okay. Once you have your vocabulary. Um, usually, usually you'll see like uh, different, like on GitHub and stuff, you'll see uh, dictionaries being made uh, based on your vocabulary so you can have easy indexing. Um, when you're trying to assign uh, characters to indexes um, and also just so you have like one coherent set. Uh, you can do that so there's like an optional, uh, an option here to create dictionaries so like a letter to index dictionary and an index to letter dictionary. Um, it's not 100% necessary, but it does, in my opinion, clean up your code. Um, but yeah, so the first thing you'll want to do after that, if you want to do that, uh, is create a, a new transcript uh, where each of the sentences, uh, which previously had like a list of characters, is now just going to be a list of numbers um, based on the index of the corresponding character that you're looking at. Uh, so that's like the first thing you want to do. Um, Uh, if you if you wondered why this was a, a pad sequence or this was a pad character per se um, in the first uh, the first space of the letter list, uh, that's because usually when you're using the embeddings during uh, during like the decoding or an encoding or, or anything, you usually set the padding index to zero. So that's the only reason why I, I used this as the, the padding index, just so it's a little bit more consistent with what you usually see. Um, you can feel free to modify this if you don't like it there, or if you like it somewhere else. Okay, so also, uh, when you're doing this, this creation of the, of the letters to indexes and whatnot, uh, you want to be careful that you create your sentences such that they use, uh, they follow the correct format that we've specified before, such that like they have a start of sequence token, they have an end of sequence token, uh, that whole thing. Cool. Uh, the next thing I have here is I have a specified speech to text data set also in the data loader. Uh, this is like a, a bare bones example um, that you can modify as you see fit. Uh, this is just an implementation that may work. Depending upon your implementation, this may not work. Uh, so, however, you're specifying the speech and text, uh, you're going to want to you're going to want to update this accordingly. Um, there's also a boolean specified here, a self dot is train boolean, because uh, this is just also being used for the. I keep switching to that. This is also being used for the text data set, and just setting that boolean to false uh, here. We're just setting that to false, then we're using this for the test. Again, uh, you're going to need to modify this accordingly depending upon how you set up your data. Uh, so this is just a bare bones example uh, that you could use if you'd like to. Additionally, you're going to have to write the collate functions, which you should have done in homework three part two. Uh, these require a little bit more information out of them because of the because uh, of the attention, because of the model structure. Um, so just like it says here, you're going to want to return uh, the padded speech and text data um, as long as the lengths of the utterances and the transcripts. Um, when you're training and then during test time, you don't have uh, the text data. You just have the speech data. So you're going to want to return the speech and the length of the utterance. Uh, and again, this is for padding. This is for masking. This is for all that other, other jazz. So I think that goes through all of the data loader file. Uh, we can hop back over to the main file. I haven't specified the validation data set or loader um, because it's really on how you want to implement it. Um, some people like to think of it more as testing, whereas some people like to think of it more as training. Uh, feel free to think about it however you like. I hope that 
at this point in the deep learning class, you have a good foundation for thinking about these tough topics uh, or these implementation decisions, I guess is the right word. Um, and then, you know, using your own intuition to, to guide you moving forward. Uh, additionally, these are all kind of pre-specified pre here, uh, but you know, of course, as you're as you complete the uh, the implementation, you're going to need to uh, tune these type of parameters or modify them in, in one way or another to to generate a, a model that passes the A cutoff um, in terms of you know choosing a different optimizer or choosing batch sizes or you know whatever. Uh, yeah, so this should take care of the main file. And then there's a there's a, a, a training loop here, um, and then you know you can you could test every epoch, you could test every other epoch, you can you can set this up however you like. Again, this is just skeleton code that you just take and make your own. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't like just take this code and try to run it. Uh, a, it's not going to work because you know you have functions that aren't implemented, um, and B. Uh, if you don't know what each line of code is doing, you're going to have a really hard time debugging things in the future. Uh, so what I would do if I was you, I would kind of set up this as like a, a file on its own and then maybe start your own file uh, where you start to write the code for all these, uh, all these different files. Um, and then as you go through each line, kind of stopping and uh, trying to think about what it's actually doing. And that's going to be more important moving forward. Additionally, uh, actually, one, one thing that's not in the data loader file is a uh, index to letter uh, function that you're going to have to write. You, know, you could write it right here, too. Um, this is for the, uh, once you have outputs um, from your decoder, you're going to want to transform those outputs from indexes uh, into uh, characters. So you're going to have to write a, an index to letter function, which does the opposite of the uh, letter to index function here. Okay, so now we're done with the data letter. Uh, and again, that would, you know, you would use that in test or a Kaggle test or something. Or it would be for uh, Kaggle, but you could use it to, to check how you're doing. Okay, let's move on. Got a little piece of paper next to me. <sighs> let's go into the models. Uh, yeah, let's do that first. So these are all of the models that you're going to be implementing. Uh, you have attention, uh, PBLSTM, the encoder, decoder, uh, and the seek to seek. So all of these models are implemented to some form already for you. And what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to go in and fully implement them uh, to uh, to complete the assignment, pretty much. Um, some of these aren't implemented, so like the attention and the PBLSTM are not implemented for you, uh, so that you're going to have to implement all of this. Uh, on your own. That's exciting, very exciting. Um, also, I would note that even though some of this code is already given for you, I would, again, like I had previously said, I would try to not directly copy any of this code, but um, use it as reference while you're writing your own code. Uh, because when you're writing your own code, you have more control and you can really understand what is happening from line to line. Uh, whereas if you're just taking like all of this code at once and just kind of copying it into your own file, you're going to really get messed up on like what's happening in this decoder, for example. Uh, but I'll go through this all you know, with you in a second. So we'll start with the seek to seek model, which is uh, the thing that is being run from, uh, the thing that is being set as the model uh, in the main file. Whoops. Gosh darn it. Okay. So the seek to seek model, the seek to seek model is just a wrapper, really, for the uh, the encoder and the decoder structure, uh, because they're so. You don't really need to spec like create this model, but it's just easier, uh, so you can have one place that you use to like pass all your input and get the output from. Uh, you could like use the encoder and decoder uh, in the train loop. Uh, that's also possible, but it's just easier if you specify one model that does everything for you. Uh, yeah, and it takes in the encoder and the decoder, uh, the listener and the speller, and then it uh, you know, passes the input to the encoder, passes the uh, passes the output of the encoder to the decoder, and you know does all the uh, attention and whatnot. Um, 
So all that stuff is done, that should be done within the encoder and the decoder. Uh, you shouldn't really have to modify this model at all, or this, this class at all. So let's go over to the PBLSTM. Um, so why are we using a PBLSTM instead of just a regular LSTM? Uh, well, the paper uh, talks about how when they were using a regular LSTM uh, for the encoder, the the convergence was slow and like very unreliable, um, and even had uh, inferior results at, even after training. Uh, so that's that's a reason to 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 use it. Just believe what the author said. Uh, you could test out a regular LSTM. I assume you'll do very poorly on the assignment, uh, but you know. Have fun. Uh, so the the details are covered uh, in the lecture or like in the the recitation accompany, accompanying this, the one that Pedant does. Um, but the I would really encourage you to think about um, how the in, like how pad pack sequence works um, and how the the that whole uh, organization and structure works because um, you're going to have to be using uh, you're going to have to be like unpadding and padding sequences a lot uh, so if you really understand if you really understood that from homework three part two uh, this homework assignment will be a lot easier because uh, it's doing it's doing a lot of the padding and packing and unpacking and unpadding uh, but on a whole other scale uh, where we're doing it like you know between LSTMs and uh, with multiple LSTMs and all this stuff, things that you didn't really see in the previous homework, but you're still going to see now, um, or you're going to have to implement now, pretty much. Uh, yeah, and then if you if you need help understanding this, there's a good uh, Vedant went over it in detail in the uh, in the recitation in the earlier portion of this recitation, as well as uh, there's stuff online probably that talks about this if you really want to dive into it. Uh, but you're going to have to implement the, uh, the PBLSTM here. Let's move on to the encoder. Uh, so a good bit of the encoder has been coded for you, but that doesn't mean that you should just copy it because depending upon the your implementation, how you pass in your data uh, will affect the, the quality or like the actual uh, bugginess of your code. Uh, so if you're just assuming that this is going to work, uh, because your other code worked, then you're probably going to be wrong because you could have specified your collate function differently than we did. Um, so uh, with that, uh, this is kind of an, another uh, a skeleton of your code uh, that you can use as a reference for later on. Uh, but this is where you know you'd be using the PBLSTMs um, and then you know using those in the forward pass uh, and then uh, padding the pack sequence from the outputs of your LSTMs. Uh, your PBLSTMs, and then uh, getting the keys and values, uh, which are just linear layers, uh, from from the LSTMs, um, and then you know outputting that uh, from the encoder. Uh, yeah, so hopefully you understand what like the the key network and the value network are. These are literally just uh, linear layers um, that are being used. To create like these quote-unquote projections um, for the, from the uh, as output of the encoder. Uh, I think when the, we implemented this, um, I used three PBLSTM blocks. Um, so I think that's all you'll need for your your implementation, just three of them. Um, but again, you know, feel free to uh, play around with that as much as you want. Um, try out more, try out less, but three should three should work for your implementation of the assignment. Um, and then, uh, you know, after there's a lot of packing and unpacking of data and reshaping of data that's associated in this encoder um, because of the PBLSTMs. So be careful about the final output, um, and you might need to reshape things or uh, pad certain things depending upon um, depending on what they what their output looks like, uh, so they so they can go into these linear layers um, when you're done. So just remember to really uh, think about that when you're when you're coding this up. I 
right, let's take a dive. We won't, we will, we'll get to the decoder in a second, but uh, the decoder is kind of dependent upon the attention layer. Uh, so we're going to talk about the attention layer now. Uh, again, the attention was covered in the previous recitation. Um, and also Vedant kind of went into detail about the whole uh, energy attention context uh, implementation for this assignment. Um, so I won't go into detail about what that is, but uh, you can look at the PyTorch documentation and they have um, they have like a BMM thing uh, that you can use if you need to. Um, so I would if I wouldn't like go into this assignment thinking that you have absolutely no chance of finishing it. Um, you have a chance of finishing it. You just have to start it like as soon as the as soon as the uh, the assignment like comes out. Um, hopefully everybody is still on pace with finishing the class on time. I know that this is a these are crazy times out there, man. We don't know what's going on, but we have to. We have to stick to something, you know, and uh, I think sticking sticking to deep learning is an important uh, idea. And there's there's a lot of cool things that people are doing right now, even uh, with deep learning, uh, especially with the the COVID nineteen outbreak. Um, ooh, pandemic! The COVID nineteen pandemic. Um, there's a lot of cool things that people are doing, and there's a lot of things that even Bixia is doing, um, you know, to try to help in some way, shape, or form. Uh, so so you may think that like you know completing assignment during this time is uh, kind of silly or there's no you know what's the point in doing it um, but there's there's a lot of point in doing it because there's uh, there's a way that like you know you could help you know save a life if uh, you're proficient enough with like a certain skill set um, and if you're not a doctor and if you're not a nurse um, and you're just a student then uh, spending time working on this assignment isn't a waste of time because uh, you know your skills your skills that you learn here can help other people in the future. Um, and I think that's constantly important to think about when uh, you know, you're know you stuck inside working on homework. Uh, thinking that, oh, you know, what is attention? Why do I need to know how it works? Um, it's because attention is like one of the most important things in deep learning right now. And it's kind of leading the, the whole scope of uh, it's 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 the it's the leading supportive tool I'd say in in deep learning research, um, kind of like how uh, like ResNet did a lot of cool things. Um, Attention and Transformers are doing a lot of cool things now. Um, yeah, so my little spiel. Uh, where was I? I was on attention. Uh, Okay, so this isn't just regular attention. Um, we're going to be uh, we're going to have a masked attention. So don't forget when you're completing this attention, with it, which again, uh, Vedant hopefully specified quite a bit in it when he talked about uh, the type of attention we're using for this assignment. Um, you're going to want to uh, create a mask based on um, you know your input in some way uh, that you use again to to mask the uh, the output of the attention. Um, the query here is the, uh, the output of the LSTM cell decoder, uh, and the key and value, as I, as I talked about before with the encoder, is just the output of the encoder. Uh, oh, it says it right there. Key projection from encoder. Um, oh, and it says that right there too. <laughs> Great. I don't even need to be talking. What am I doing here? Uh, I'm learning. That's what I'm doing. Lower set of operations you need to perform. Yeah. Uh, so this this is the general ordering and structuring of the the attention class that you should um, that you should look into uh, for the forward. And again, there's going to be a lot of weird manipulations that you're going to have to do to the data. You're going to have you might have to reshape it depending upon how you implement it. Um, you might have and then you have to you know put the mask on it and do all this other stuff. So uh, this isn't as straightforward as just you know running these three lines of code. Um, but this this is the the premise of it. And you know your output should be the context, and then this this output context is what's going to be used uh, in in the decoder uh, later on that we're actually going to get to right now. Okay, so this is the decoder. Say hi, hi. 
Um, we're using an LSTM cell here instead of LSTMs right there and right there uh, because we're going to be uh, manipulating the input um, that you that you know usually in an LSTM you just kind of feed the hidden state um, and like all of your all of your like input data at once into the LSTM uh, but you know as Vedant was talking about we're going to be uh, updating uh, that that hidden state using attention um, and that's going to affect the the next input or the next hidden state that's being fed into the LSTM cell uh, which is why we're using an LSTM cell here instead of an LSTM. Uh, and I think that's already, you know, it's talked about in other comments. So if you are done listening to me talking, then you can just read the comments. Um, yeah, output a LSTM cells use as query here for attention module. Um, in place of the value that we get from the attention, we can replace this context we get from attention. I don't know if that sentence made sense. Oh, okay, and then uh, like we're not talking about again, gumbel noise and teacher forcing. Uh, you can incorporate that here as well. Um, so these are just the the cells, the LCM cells for the decoder. Uh, the embedding, which takes in that bokeh size, which is dependent upon um, that initial letter list that we gave. Uh, again, if you're using, so we're doing character based. Uh, this, is a, this is a character based skeleton, but if you want to do a word based, you know, you this would be a completely different uh, structure. Uh, and you'd have to do a lot more pre-processing, uh, which is which is entirely possible if you'd like to do that. But you know that's not the code we gave you. So suckers. Again, padding index is specified as zero here, uh, so don't modify that if you don't want to. Um, here are the cells. Uh, if the attention is is true, if it's specified as true here, uh, you're gonna have to use the attention. Um, and then this is the uh, character probability linear layer. Uh, the projection that you're going to use later. Okay, so what's going on here? So this is the the forward pass for the decoder. Uh, it's going to take in these the key, uh, which is just like your time step by your batch size by like the key size. Um, output of the encoder key projection. Again, all of these are pretty well documented here. Um, and the values and the value size and the text and the text size. Um, all pretty straightforward in terms of inputs, right? These are just from the, the encoder, um, and the text is, uh, it's, it's gonna be none when you're training, or it's gonna be none when you're at test time. Uh, but for training and uh, validation, you should, I think you should be passing the test in, um, the text in, uh, or maybe not for validation, uh, but definitely for training, you should pass the text in uh, so you can actually train it. Nevertheless, uh, so so why would you pass the text in? Uh, so that depends on the the uh, for, uh, teacher forcing uh, probability that you use. Uh, so teacher forcing has been talked about quite a bit, but pretty much uh, at some with some probability, you're going to use either the output of your uh, model or you're going to use the the true the ground truth value uh, for a given time step in the decoder. Um, and that's done, you know, you, so that's something that you're gonna have to implement here. Um, yeah, but first, so let's go, let's talk about what this is doing. Um, so depending upon if you're at training or test time, uh, we have specified, uh, you, have, you have to specify a max length that you're, that the number of time steps that you're going to iterate over. Sorry. You're going to have to specify a number of time steps to iterate over. Um, Based on your based on like your input, uh, and during test time you don't know what that length is, uh, but during train time you do. Uh, so you can just get like the max length of of the data from from this, and then pass that through the embeddings here um, to get the embeddings. Uh, and then you know if you're not at if you're not at test time, uh, then you can just uh, specify a max length between 200 and 300. Uh, we, we gave you 250 here just as a starter. You can probably leave this as is. Um, the predictions are going to be a list of all of the, the outputs of the linear layer, um, all the outputs of this uh, appended together 
um, and then you'll you'll concatenate them. So you'll you'll append them, and then you'll concatenate them all together uh, when you return it. Um, the hidden states are going to start out as uh, none and none. <laughs> yeah, so the hidden states start out as none and none, um, but you'll be, uh, those are like the attention hid hidden states, I think, um, are the ones that you'll be using for that. Uh, and you'll update these uh, as, um, like, the, they'll up they're updated here as the model performs. Uh, they're in, they'll, they'll initially start out as being none, but then, you know, you can uh, start update, updating them with the outputs of the LSTM. Um, another thing you're going to have to do is uh, replace, so wherever these values occur, um, that's, that, sh that should be the context. So the one thing that's not implemented for you in this whole assignment uh, throughout everything is attention. Uh, so the one thing that you're going to have to do big time is uh, add attention to the decoder, uh, which is where the attention is used. Um, and uh, so right now we just used uh, we're passing in these values um, indexed as the uh, for the time steps as the hidden state or as the the context, uh, but that's incorrect, right? So um, you're gonna have to use like your attention uh, attribute here um, and pass in the the correct values um, for the uh, for the attention at a given index. Uh, Um, yeah, so here you're doing the same thing. Uh, use output of the, the first LSTM as input to the next one. Um, but again, you're going to want to use uh, attention here as specified before, uh, specified by Vedant, Vedant during, the, uh, during his recitation um, in, in a correct way. Uh, and we're not, we're not exactly telling you how to do that because hopefully the explanation and the, the intuition can come through. Uh, about kind of explaining, kind of explaining everything with you know, kind of giving it away, uh, and we don't hope to do that, but we hope that ho we hope that this overview will help you quite a bit. Um, yeah, and then uh, the output of the second LSTM uh, should be used as the uh, the input for the uh, for the attention. Um, and then you obviously can concatenate. Yeah, so like wherever these values are, like that's where the, the new context should be. Um, so then the output of the attention module, or the, the output of the attention layer, or whatever you call it, uh, would be the context that you pass in. Um, and then you know, you'd loop in on itself, and then inputs would be outputs and whatnot. Hopefully that all made sense. If not, you can uh, barrage us on Piazza, which you have been doing already. Yeah, and these are just the embeddings or the, uh, the predictions based on um, the training or test time. And then you're gonna have to intertwine uh, gumball noise and teacher forcing here as well. I've already said all that. Yeah, and then as I said, you're gonna return the, the predictions from the, uh, from the linear layer. Yep, okay, so those are the models. And the last thing, uh, what did I do? Oh, I added spaces and stuff. Uh, you're gonna want to go over the. I'm gonna go over the training and testing loop. Uh, so we're not gonna give you any code for this except for like the basic stuff. Um, but there is a pretty detailed uh, line by line walkthrough here that you're gonna that you can go through. Um, everything is indented based on like indentation style that you'd want to use. Um, so this is something that you can follow pretty directly. Uh, but the reason why we didn't give you any code for it is because it's going to be heavily based on your implementation decisions in the collate function um, and like your data loader function and all this other stuff. So this is this really is best done, this really is best left for you to implement on your own. Um, and uh, again, you're going to have to make, just like we're using uh, a mask for the attention, you're going to have to make a mask for the, the text uh, from the decoder. Um, based upon like the, the length of that text and like you know where it is in the batch um, and then you use this mask this is this is the hardest thing you have to use this mask um, when you calculate a, 
a loss because you want to you really you really want to get a masked loss. You don't want to use the original loss. Um, so you're gonna use the mask on the on the loss that you'd get from the criterion um, to make a new loss to make a new max masked loss, uh, and then you run backwards on that new masked loss instead of the original one. Um, and then this this kind of all of these steps kind of go through exactly what you want to do for the training loop. Um, one one weird thing, I guess, is this. Uh, at some point, you're, you might need to do some reshaping. Um, and if you ever run into a, like a big bug and it just seems like it's really random, uh, you might need to add this dot contiguous here. Uh, and you can Google what that means exactly because it's kind of hard to explain exactly why it's, why it's necessary, but you might need to use it for certain, uh, when you reshape or uh, transpose certain elements. Just a heads up on that. Uh, anything else? So normalization is important. Make sure you do that um, after your mask loss. Um, and then you can, you can know, you can when you're doing when you're first starting out and you want to make sure that your model is performing correctly. You can, you know, you print, print your loss or uh, check the FAQ. We're going to give you a way to visualize. I think the attention. Um, so all that stuff you should do throughout when you're when you're writing your code here. Yeah, so I believe that is everything, 525. I hope this was helpful. Um, and I hope that you guys can uh, modify this decoder. This decoder is the, the most important, uh, or the, the place where you can get the most bugs, I think. Because um, if you don't, you know, if you don't do the correct attention between cells and whatnot, um, you're gonna run into a lot of issues uh, that are that's no fun to debug. Um, yeah, so I hope everybody is out there being safe. Uh, nobody's uh, you know pushing it too hard, but you're also staying on top of you know the assignments and the schoolwork uh, that might seem mundane or unnecessary, but uh, I think they're. They have the they have the possibility of being you know pretty important in the future. Um, I hope that everybody does well in this assignment. Oops, I should say that. Um, yeah. So good luck on homework four part two. Start start it you know yesterday, uh, or the day before that, or the day before that. Um, well, finish homework three first, I guess, and then start homework four. Uh, but yeah, good luck on everything. Have fun. Oh well, no, don't have fun outside. Have fun inside. Uh, you know, you could play some video games. You could draw. You could read. You could. What could you do inside? You could do some push-ups. You could do a lot of things inside. So just, you know, stay inside and stay safe. Good luck. Bye bye.